So short-acting beta agonists uh, bronchodilate by stimulating the the uh, beta receptors on the bronchial smooth muscle, and they have a very quick onset. And because of that, they're considered the first-line treatment for patients with asthma symptoms. And there's about five uh, short-acting beta agonists you may ex- uh, expect to see on the exam. Albuterol is really the drug of choice for patients who are wheezing. It's the fastest and the most effective uh, beta-2 agonist. Levalbuterol has less cardiac side effects than um, albuterol. So if you have a patient whose heart rate has increased more than 20 beats per minute, it may be a good choice. And uh, the other three, uh, perbuterol, metaproterenol, and racemic epinephrine, those are just here for completion's sake. You probably won't see them on the exam, but you may. So the key points I want you to remember regarding short-acting beta agonists are that uh, number one, you should prescribe these first anytime a patient on the exam is showing uh, acute asthma symptoms or there's evidence that they're having an asthma attack. Secondly, if the patient's heart rate increases while taking any of these beta agonists, then you should change to a different drug within the same class, such as levalbuterol, which is known to have less cardiac side effects, or you can decrease the dosage so long as it still remains therapeutic, so don't go too low with the dosage. The third thing to keep in mind is to not combine short-acting beta agonists together. So you don't want to combine albuterol with levalbuterol or metaproterenol with um, racemic epinephrine. Uh, that's never a good idea, and that'll lose you points on the exam for sure. And finally, on the exam, you can mix short-acting beta agonists with anticholinergics such as ipratropium bromide.